except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac, had been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children which they have born? Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. Now, the last time we looked in this, we saw about Abraham's death, and we recognized his uh, great age and everything that was a part of that. We recognized that the sons of Isaac were now about 15 years old at that point in time, and uh, uh, so they knew their grandfather, and they had witnessed his faith in God, and they had seen a number of things that had to do with that. Their father Isaac was certainly a man who trusted and believed in God as well, and uh, but his his lifestyle and the things about him were so different than Abraham, and yet there were some things that were similar uh, that uh, that Isaac did, and we talked about some of those things uh, the last time. But we really want to concentrate tonight on uh, Jacob. Jacob uh, is a man that. Uh, as he was growing up, his lifestyle was so completely different than his twin brother. His twin brother, born just shortly before him, uh, him grabbing a hold of the ankle and them naming him Jacob, which means uh, supplanter or deceiver or uh, any of the things that relate to that particular thing. And as he grew up, he lived true to his name. He was deceptive in all kinds of ways. He was, uh, as he uh, made the, the broth and the things and and uh, literally uh, in that sense of the word stole the birthright from his brother but now the reality is that God said the birthright was going to be his and we recognize that and the blessing would be his he had already said that it was Jacob that was going to be the one that the future would be involved with that uh, the blessing of Abraham was going to be and as we begin looking at these particular chapters, we, uh, we, we look at what Esau has been doing. Esau, at 40 years of age, went and took a wife of the Hittites. Now, that was the land in which they dwelt. That was the place where they were. And it was a grief to his mother and father because they didn't want him having anything to do with those in the land. If you remember, Abraham sent his servant back to his father's house to obtain a wife for Isaac. And that's where Rebecca came from. And, um, the, the, and as we go through this, and we read this, we recognize Laban is actually Rebecca's brother. And they are both uh, the children of the same father. And, and so uh, that's where Jacob has been in the scriptures that are read as my text. But we want to recognize a couple of things that happened. Now, you realize that uh, as parents, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I can't remember you know exactly about it. Uh, I've heard people say something about having a favorite here or there, but and I only have one child, so she's definitely my favorite. I'll just have to tell you, okay? Uh, so without any question, then that's the situation. Uh, but uh, they were, Jacob was a mama's boy, Esau was a daddy's man, okay? And he went hunting and he done all the things that uh, were considered to be very manly in every kind of way. And, uh, Jacob kind of hung around the house, and, uh, and, and, and as, the, as the time went on, uh, when it came time, as, I, as Isaac says, I'm getting old, I don't see so well anymore, I don't know when the day of my death is, so I want to give you a blessing, go out and hunt. And so we know the story about all of that, and how that, how that Rebecca heard it, and she went and made this stuff that was savory and everything the way that Isaac liked it, because she knew exactly what he liked. And uh, so she got Jacob and told him to do it this way. And, and so he did what his mother told him to do. And he went in with the sheepskin on his arm and everything and, everything, and I, all the things. And of course, Isaac said, well, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Anyway, 
as they done, uh, he, he's, he blessed him. He gave him the blessing that spoke about the future, that spoke about what was going to take place and happen, that, that he would have uh, the inheritance of Abraham, the inheritance that belonged to Isaac, the things that God had promised would belong to Jacob and his descendants. That, that was the blessing. That was what was to take place. And, and so and he left out of there, and Esau came in and asked, please give me a blessing of some kind. And his father said, well, you will break the yoke of your brother at some point in time. And those, that was the only blessing he could give him. So uh, because of that circumstance, Esau says, well, the day of my father's death is at hand. He's going to die. And when he dies, I'm going to kill that guy. I'm going to get rid of him. That's exactly what he said. And, and of course, the word came down. And, ja and uh, so uh, Rebecca uh, talked to Jacob about leaving. And Isaac actually then took him in. And he said, it, it's our desire that you take a wife of, of uh, our family. And so he said, he gave him the blessing. And he told him in that blessing, he said, what was Abraham's is going to be yours. That's, that's the way it is. That's what God has designated. That's the way it's going to happen. And so Jacob left and headed for his sister's brother's, I mean his mother's brother's house. And on the way, he laid down to sleep that night. And you all, I'm sure you've heard as he spoke about it, as he laid down and he used a rock for a pillow. And he laid there and he had a dream. And in the dream, there was a ladder to heaven. And, you know, uh, and uh, angels were descending and ascending on that ladder, going back and forth. And God spoke to him out of that and says, I'm the God of Abraham and your father Isaac. And he said, I will be with you every step of the way. I'm going to be there all the way through it. I'm going to be there. And I'm not going to leave you until you get back to this very place that I promise you I'm going to stay right with you. And so Jacob awoke and he said, Surely this is the gate of heaven. Surely the Lord is in this place. Surely this is the Lord's house. And he set up a rock, the rock that he had slept on, and he took the and he took oil and he poured it on the rock and he made a covenant with God that he would be his God if he would indeed do what he said that he would do in that dream. And then he went on uh, his way to, uh, and got to the place and, and uh, they were, got around close by and he saw these people sitting by a well and there was a rock on the well and he says, he says where am I and do you all know who... Laban is and the son of Bethuel and all those things and, and they said uh, yeah, well yeah we're waiting until everybody gets here and we're going to take the, get the rock off and we'll and we're going to water the sheep and he says said and here comes Laban's daughter Rebecca, uh, um, Rachel and she's the one that keeps his sheep and so she came and and uh, it was love at first sight I'm telling you. Uh, Jacob fell in love with her right then and there. He pulled the rock off, he, he watered the sheep, and, and she went and told Laban. Laban came out and hugged him and said, and was, said, you're bone of my bone, and all those kinds of things, and brought him into his house, and, and he stayed there a month, and uh, he was just working for Laban for nothing. And uh, so Laban says, well, why should you not get anything out of him? Tell me what your wages ought to be. And he says, he said, well, if you'll, uh, you'll give me your youngest daughter, Rachel, to be your wife, I'll, I'll work for you seven years. And, and so he, and he says, okay. So he worked seven years, and they seemed like it was just a little bitty short time because he was so in love with Rachel. And you all know all about it because the night that they got married, he ended up with Leah instead of Rachel. And then, and so... Uh, Laban says, says, well, it's not right for the younger daughter to marry for the old one, older one. So uh, uh, anyway, he says, but if you'll work for me seven more years, you can, have, you can have her too, but I'll go ahead and give her to you in a week. So a week later, he married the other one, then he worked for seven more years. And then uh, at the end of that, he says, hey, Uncle Laban, I want to go home. 
And Laban says, well, you know, God has blessed me because of you. I have learned by experience that that's the situation. I've gained and gained because you're here, because God loves you. And so he says, just tell me what you want. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, we'll take the sheep and we'll pull out all of these that are, are uh, ring straight and, and spotted and all of that, and we'll just have just the normal sheep and uh, the normal goats, and, and uh, if any of them have these babies that look like that, then they'll be mine and the rest of them will be yours. Now, now Jacob, he, um, you know, the reality is that God was with him all the way. Uh, we read about those ring stake to him taking the, the, the different kinds of wood and cutting it and putting the water trough and all that, but I'm telling you, it had nothing to do with it. God had to do with it. God was blessing Jacob, and that's the way it was. And, and the reality is that over a period of time, uh, some uh, six more years or so, he served him, and in that time, he built up a rather significant flock of his own, and he separated all of those over. And as we read in this particular uh, event, uh, the situation, uh, he, uh, uh, if there was anything that got stolen, and Laban says, my sheep have been stolen, they've been taken, somebody rustled them off, you know. He said, he bore the loss, okay. If any of them just died, and I'll tell you what, if you, you know, as my brother-in-law always used to say to me, if it walks on four legs, it can die. That's just the way it is. And, and uh, I mean, you know, I I've, I've drove around the field where, a cat, where my cattle was and, and come across a place where a cat fell over into a, 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 over a little precipice and broke its neck. I mean, it, it happens, you know, that. He said, well, if any of those things happen, said, I, did, I just took the loss. I didn't tell you anything about it. I just took the loss. I didn't do anything. I didn't make you pay for half. I didn't do any of those things. I took the loss. Yeah. So at the end of it, yeah, all of, as he gained, and it looked like Laban's crops uh, or his uh, cattle had kind of dwindled, uh, Laban's son began to look at him and kind of an odd way. They didn't care much about him because he was getting wealthy and they were not. And, and uh, so Laban began to look at him differently. And so one day he called his wives out to the field where he was at. He said, your father's countenance doesn't look so good on me anymore. He doesn't seem to like me the way he once did. He, this is a situation. And he says, I'm afraid well, you know what the situation was. Six years ago, when I said I want to go home, he said, no, you stick around. He said, I'm afraid you'll leave me and make me go off totally empty. And they said, look, he sold us. Said, we have no inheritance with our father. Said, you do what God tells you to do. That's what his wife said. And so they took off. They didn't tell him anything about it. They took off. And Laban got word that they were gone. And so he grabbed up his troops and all of his people and he headed out chasing him. The night came and Laban lay down to sleep and God said, you be sure you don't do anything to him, neither good nor bad. You leave him alone. He belongs to me. And so after... Uh, when he caught up with him the next day, when he, he says, he said, well, he said, God told me this, but he says, I want to know why you took my gods with you. Because he had false gods. He had idols and that kind of thing. And they worshiped falsely. And uh, Jacob says, well, I was afraid of you is the reason I left. But he said, if you find your gods in anyone, anyone, anybody's tent, he said, that person will die. He didn't really know everything he was pronouncing when he said that. But we'll have to look at that a little later because we're not going to go that far as we look in this tonight. But the um, circumstance is that now Jacob has a bunch of sons because Leah had six sons and Rachel's already had one. Okay? And Bila and uh, well, I can't remember her name. 
names. It's, it's sometimes they're kind of tough. Hilda or something to that effect. It began with an H. But anyway, they had two apiece. So he's got six, ten, eleven kids, eleven sons right now, and he's got one daughter. Her name's done. Okay. So he's already got all these kids, and he wants to go home, and he's headed that way. Now, we know the circumstance, and we'll look at that circumstance a little later when it comes to Esau and everything that deals with that. But at this point, uh, Laban catches up with him, and uh, in the situation, uh, God said, you leave him alone. And so he says, so he searched all the tents, and, uh, and Rachel uh, deceived him, and, uh, but it was in her tent. We do know that. The gods were there, but uh, he didn't find anything. And he told him, he said, here's what's happened. But you see, kind of what happened is that Jacob kind of went going around and comes around in a little sense because he had been very deceptive in his life. He came and found out he got it pretty honest, okay? His uncle Laban was as deceptive as he was, and even more so. And he switched around and around and around. But in all of these things, what we see in Jacob, and this is the whole point of the story, this is the whole point of what it all is about, you see, is that while Jacob, as a young man, he was, he was taught in such a way that his parents kind of separating between him and his brother and actually making that tension that was there Parents shouldn't be doing things like that. Okay, that's a tough situation. Love all your children and treat them good. Okay, uh, teach them right. Teach them the truth. Uh, favoritism will always bring jealousy. That's just the way it is. But in all of that and in that learning, they were they should have been teaching him complete trust in God. God said. This is going to be yours someday. God had already made that designation. He told Rebecca while they were still in the womb, this is going to be the situation. You're going to be blessed. Your children are going to be blessed, and they're going to be a blessing to every nation on the earth. And But Jacob felt like he had to make it happen, just like so often we feel that way. we got to make it happen. we got... We know what God's will is, now let's make it happen. God can handle things. He doesn't have to have us make it happen, okay? We're there to do what His will is and to be obedient to Him. And when we're obedient to Him, His blessings will come. That's the way it is. And so as He left, He left with that idea in His head and He got there and, and in the things that He was doing, He thought He was making things happen. God said, I'm going to be with you all the way. And God was. He was with him every step of the way. But when he's coming back, you know, God tells him uh, in the, uh, as, he, as he dreams the dreams and as he uh, looks up to heaven and as he recognizes the blessing of God and as he speaks of these uh, things, he says, he said, this is going to be yours. This is going to be your descendants. You're going to have descendants like the sand of the sea. He said, every nation on earth will be blessed through you. He tells him about the coming Messiah. He tells him about the future. And he makes him aware of it. But Jacob has trust problems. And it took him those 20 years with his uncle to reach a point where he trusted God to go back to where he needed to be. He went back to Bethel. God is always the God of Bethel. The place where he spoke to you, he's there waiting. And if you look for him, you can be sure he will be found of you. And these, uh, these are the things. God is still the God of Bethel, and his word is sure. Jacob didn't have to do all those things. Because God said, this is what's going to happen. And God's word is sure. What God promises, he always keeps. He never fails. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. 
He will always keep his promise. Be certain of that. And Jacob could have been certain of that all the way through it. And God would have brought it about in God's way, in God's time. God would have brought it about just like he will for you and for me. His promises are sure. And he is steadfast. And his word will last like our Sunday school lesson this morning said. I don't know if you had a chance to read it or not. It's Psalms 119, verses 1 through 11. But what it says is that God's word is sure. And what God says will, ta will happen. And be sure that it will. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Trust him. Let him show you just exactly what he will do. Father, as we come to you in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for these events in the life of Jacob and Lord, for all those things that were a part of that. For the children you gave him, for the circumstance that he found himself in where you blessed him over and over and over again. Lord, where he finally came to a place where he could trust. Lord, we just pray that you'd help us to always look to you and to take you at your word in Jesus' name.